Hello, John here. After the uh, video, the overview of the SD to IEC video, I thought I would try and explain why one of the reasons I bought it and, and um, the journey that I had trouble with in converting these a five and a quarter inch floppy disk with uh, 368 blocks on there which was about 140k or something like that onto one of these which is an SD card so I bought a Commodore 64 off someone in Derby and he uh, sold me the 64 with one of these. Now this is an X1541 cable. So on one end that you connect to your PC, you connect this, which is a parallel uh, port socket to your disk drive. 1541 disk drive, 1570, 71 serial port and using the uh, CBM file transfer program you could copy from the Commodore disk drive to the PC into um, D64 images. The problem was since when does a laptop which is the sort of things that I've got nowadays have a parallel port so I was a bit disappointed that this cable didn't quite do what I wanted and it's one of the reasons why I bought the 64 was to get this cable so I decided to scour the internet and find if the ways was a modern equivalent to it and I found a website in Poland that created these an XU 1541 interface for the Commodore computer and what it did it allowed you to plug your 1540 your Commodore disk drive into here and then a USB cable into here which went into your computer's USB port and when you plugged it in the power light would come on and when there was activity, communication activity, the busy night would flash. The, th the problem with this was you had to install uh, a driver and installing on Windows 10 was an absolute pain. You had to uh, tell Windows to allow unsigned drivers, which means you're, you, you're sort of exposing Windows to unsavory software. Try and install it and then run the CBM transfer program on top of it and one of the problems I had was the communication between the disk drive and the computer was unreliable and six, five out of six attempts would fail with read errors and then when you did get a, a success when you come to look of it you found that the D64 was damaged and so um, and that's why when I did my last video I'd got some D64 images that couldn't be read because there was a transfer issue so after trying this and getting really frustrated I thought I'd give up I, I, I just thought that's it there's no way of doing it I've tried the most recent technology so I gave up doing it well what happened after that was that I decided to download all the software, all the 64 software, all the images off the net because there's quite a lot of free uh, D64 images out there um, from small time developers such as myself um, that allows you to mess around with 64. So with that, I started using SD cards. And what, and what I showed before 
was the SD to IEC. Now, you can see from here that I have connected my disk drive to the, IEC, uh, the, the uh, SD to IEC hardware and oops, I forgot to show you. I have changed it to from being device 8 to being device 9. I don't know if you can see that there. You can see that I've moved the jumper. It's uh, moved across. So instead of it being on device 8 now, it's on device 9. So the SD solid state drive is now device 9. And so I've left my disk drive, which is down there, as device 8. And doing a little bit of research, I found um, a piece of software called DAC64, which was, um, I'll, I'll show you that in, in a minute. And this allows you to copy a disk, disk Commodore 64 disk to another disk. Now it doesn't matter what what disk it is. So it looks like it was originally written to copy from copy from two disk drives. Well, effectively, we have two disk drives. Just one is a solid state, and one is a normal one. So the next time you see me, the camera's going to be pointed at the telly, and I'm going to show you what I found. See you in a minute. Right. So the camera's pointed at the TV. I'm hoping you can see it. It looks like the camera's having a little problem viewing the TV, but it won't really matter once I get going. So I'm going to load the contents of my solid state drive, which is disk nine. Oh, of course it won't load until I've switched it on. Switch the disk drive on. So we'll get that to start again. For some reason, it doesn't like if you've plugged in another disk drive and you haven't got it powered up, it doesn't like it. There you go. And as you can see, I have got not many, not many stuff. So I've got my disk. So this is where I'm going to store all my images and the software is all the various software that I found. Now SJ loader is supposed to be a speed loader, but I've not managed to get it working. But the important program is the DC 64. So I'm going to load the DC 64 in. There we go. Right, if I run it. And what it's doing now is trying to read both drives. Now, I haven't got a disk in the floppy disk drive, so I'm going to put one in now and get it to read the directory again. There we go. So, here we go. So, I'm going to get it to read the directory again, which is F1. There you go. So this is so the top one here. This is the directory structure of. Excuse for the noise out there. Someone's noisy with car. This is the directory of my floppy disk, and this is the SD to IEC directory. So this is my solid state drive, and this is the floppy drive. Okay. So what I'm going to do is going to. There's a. Over there you'll see that the instruction set and you'll see the arrow and that toggles between the two windows and you'll know where you're going when you're doing the copying from here because if you notice in the top it says SO8 that means source device 8 and D09 which is source device 9 so I want to swap it over so I'm going to press the arrow key so now the solid state drive is highlighted and I want to scroll down and go into my disks so just press enter so it reads that directory on the, S the solid state drive and there's all my 
discs that I've created. Now, quite a lot of them, yeah, quite a lot of them have been um, are empty, yeah, because I I haven't actually done the transfer, but I have transferred someone. I, I I did some tests. I did this one, this one, this one. So if I load this one up, there you go. That is a direct copy of the disc two. And to go back, it's just shift and back backspace. There you are. And that's going up a directory. And to go into a directory, you press enter, which is so. You'll see it says backspace directory up and carriage return change directory. So I, I am on disk three now. So I'm going to go into open up disk three. So you can see there's nothing in it. I'm going to press the arrow key to go back. So I am now saying that the source is drive eight and the destination is drive nine. And what we've got over here is we've got F1 is DIR, then we've got two and three, not, not sure what they are. Four, it looks like it's three, F3 is hex, F4 is ASCII, copy, multiply, delete, multiply, run, disk copy, space is tag, so it looks like you can specify individual files, arrow key switch panes, change direct, um, carriage return is change directory, backspace is directory up, T, means go to the top b means go to the end of the list star means select then you've got c for copy d for delete uh, r for rename uh, m for making directory f for floppy dot right so this is the important one i wanted to show you so this is called dre copy and it's version 1.0 d uh, built december 2010 and um, there's um, Draco Sans copyright and like it says use at your own risk well I'm using it I've tested it it seems to work now to do a copy you literally press F8 so I'm going to do that now so here we go so I'm going to copy from here to here the S is on that the S is on that pane the D is on that pane so here we go F8 and it's asking, do you really want to copy from device 8 to device 9? Which, yes, device 8 is the disk drive and device 9 is the solid state drive. So I press yes. Now this is going to take about 5 minutes because it's doing each block in turn. So while this is going to happen, while this is happening, I will speed it up for you. So you don't have to, but you'll see what it's doing. So it's reading every block and then writing it. And it does it track by track. So I will see you when it's finished. Right, there you go. It has um, copied the entire disk. It took about, I think it was about 10 minutes or 11 minutes to do. There's a W in every block. There's no error. So we'll press a key and we'll see what we've got. So, so we're back to the initial interface. We're on the top panel. So we'll go to the bottom panel and we'll tell it F1 to read the directory. And there you go. So it's copied. Right, so the truly way to find out, we'll quit out of this. We'll new to make sure there's nothing there. And we'll load the directory. Whoops. There you go. So this is the disk it was meant to copy. So um, what we'll do is we'll load the pool program, which is there. It's only about 
20 blocks. So we'll just uh, focus it back on the screen. So we'll load that one. So pull program, which is in, what's that? 11. So we'll load 11 star. That's a shortcut, device nine. And this is a program that I wrote to look to uh, look after a pull team that I was back in when I was a youngster. It recorded all the stats of everybody. So if I list it, illegal selection. So I actually put a very basic password protection on it. Loads the file name of the season so it's looking on the disk drive for the file of all the stats examine enter a result oh this was a long time ago but as you can see it seems to be all there there's no corruption that I can see at the moment line 5000 line 6 5,500 there you go so that's the end so let's see if it runs ooh look at that so well I'm not going to load a seasoning because I don't think there is a season there so we'll stop it I'll put it back to black so I can see the writing So that's that one. So let's see if there's another one. Let's load another one. What have I got here? Oh dear. Oh, there's bank account. My bank account program. Oh, tape cover. Oh nine. So that tape cover, I think, is the program that generates these covers, but for a tape. Let's have a look. It looks like it. Let's run it. <laughs> Main menu for usage of. Enter data for tape label. Amend any mistakes. <laughs> Amend any mistakes. Lovely. Oh dear. Uh, print out tape label, save tape label, terminate program, clear the system. Oh, God, I used to write everything, didn't I? Right. So, back to the, uh, back to the thing. This was Master Disk 3. Copied first time without any incidents and reliably so I'm gonna do it for the fourth one so so I've got another one which is master disk 4 so I'm gonna do it again so so I'm just gonna do get it back to the normal colors so first I need to dismount the image that I've got currently in there because I need to get back to the root. Right, whoops. Hold on. Then I need to get it back to the root. So if I load the directory now. It should be the root directory. Yes, it is. Right, so I'll load DC64. And can you see that directory down there? It says MOs and it's got a capital D. What well, I'll show you the rename function and we'll make that so it's readable on here. Because if I do that, look, it's capital D for demos. Now I don't like having capitals on the 64. I have capitals on the, the PC because that's the way to split uh, to identify words. But on the 64, it doesn't work very well. 
So the first thing we'll do is that we'll rename that directory. So we'll scrub, we'll change the tap. So we're now in the bottom pane. And we'll, whoops. So I need to go back up. So I pressed enter by mistake. So there we go. So so we'll rename which is R. So you press R. And it says you want rename the file demos on device 9, yes, and we want to make it demos with no capital. Press enter, and there you go. So we'll just press F1, reloads. Oh, it didn't rename it. Looks like you can't rename a directory. Ooh, oh, rename file. Have we got rename directory? No, we haven't. Oh, that's a shame. But we can rename a file. So we could call this disk copy 64. So we'll rename this, right? So disk copy 64. There you go, it's renamed it, look. All right, so that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you the trouble I've been having getting my software onto a new one. So I'm just gonna start a new one up, so my disks. It's now on disk 4, we'll put the floppy in the drive, Correct. change the panel, F1 to read the directory, there we go, and so source is 8, destination is 9, and the command for disk copy is F8, you're going to do from 8 to 9, yes, and we're away. I will see you on the next video. I hope this was uh, useful for you guys. See you later. Bye.